Season two of the Pat and JT podcast. Oh my, now I'm here at last. The best time, always gonna be the best. Come on. Exclusively on the Herd App Media Network. Well, good morning. Um, I guess it is morning. If you're listening to it at 1030 at night, it's not morning, but it'll be a morning eventually, hopefully for you sometime at some point. So good morning to everybody. Good morning. And okay, so as this episode comes out, this episode comes out post Christmas, um, just to be um, transparent, because that's that's all the all the rage nowadays, um, to be transparent that we are recording this before Christmas. And um, this being the day that it is, we have our, one of our Hudats. So we have somebody from Herdat on with us. And we're getting to know people that we work with that we haven't maybe had the opportunity to just sit down and chat with. And this is kind of a good way to do it. And so uh, Abby Butler is with us today. Hi, Abby. Hi, Abby. Hi. Hey. And so this is pre-Christmas. Just going to point it out. But she shows up, pops on the video where we can see her and absolutely power flexes Christmas on us with a... A, a, she's got a fireplace glowing. I think there are chestnuts roasting in there. And then she has this beautiful Christmas tree and everything matches. And even she matches everything. I mean, yeah. it's just like, it's, it's, it's actually, um, it's embarrassing it's, for us. It, I'm so shamed. It, it was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> it looks great. And actually it's the episode art today. We'll, we'll just like, I just did a screenshot, creepy screenshot and we'll just throw it like just it up there. If you're okay with that. It looks super mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. don't give her, don't even give her an option. That, that looks too beautiful to say. Right, no, so. true. Yeah, very good point. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh my God, so Abby, thank you for jumping on the show with us today. Appreciate it. Did you have a good Christmas? Uh, uh, wink, wink. Oh uh, yeah, Christmas was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm excited though for Christmas. Fantastic. Right. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What what's your what's your deal? How'd you end up at Herd at? Let's just take that train. Yeah, so I'm from Omaha originally, and I go to school now at UNL in Lincoln. So I'm down there, and um, I actually happen to know another intern. She's in my sorority, Reagan, which obviously you guys have met before. And she kind of told me they were looking to hire new interns, and I was interested. So that's kind of how that all got set up, and I found myself. She's a pipe piper. She's a literal pipe piper, I swear to God. I know. I think she found every intern, honestly. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I think she has. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. So, okay, so uh, what do you do in your spare time? Just curious. What, what keeps you busy? Um, currently, I'm pretty heavily involved with my sorority, so that keeps me kind of busy doing stuff within that, within that. And then beyond that, just social things. Not too much. Kind of school and social while I'm in college <laughs> yeah. right now. So Yeah. Awesome. Oh, so tell us about what you're doing at Herd at. Yeah. So as a social media intern, I'm – Working pretty much solely on the podcast Hollywood Raw, and I do a lot of engagement and kind of other social media content for them. And I work to kind of work on show show outlines and just kind of all the behind the scenes of that podcast. So are you are you like a celebrity gossip kind of person that likes that stuff anyway? So it's kind of in your wheelhouse or do you have to learn? Honestly, no, I'm not, which kind of at first I was like, oh, gosh, I don't know anything about celebrities. I am like so far out of the loop from what's going on in Hollywood. But I kind of enjoy kind of having to like get, learn or get into it. So I find it kind of interesting now. But uh, three months ago when I started, I had no idea what was going on. But now I kind of <laughs> am subconsciously staying in the loop. So, yeah. yeah. Those guys are good. Guys. If you're going to learn from somebody, those two are probably the best, too. Yeah. So, yeah, I really enjoy it. They aren't gotcha guys. They like to get the real story. They like to talk to people and they do a great job with their interviews. Um, it's a lot of fun. Every once in a while, something slips out and it's like, Ooh, I don't think I meant to say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So let's see here. What else do we want? To what do you, what, what do you want to do when you grow up? Yes, that would be it. That I am still figuring out. I don't know. I mean, I kind of came into college completely undecided on what I want to do. And I kind of, discovered I really like different sides of business, including like marketing and media, but I also tend to like, I'm an accounting major as well. So I like accounting. So I don't know. It's totally, I've taken these four years to try new things and figure out what I really like. And I've found out I like a lot. So I'm not quite sure (laughs) where I want to go in the future, but left brain, right brain. Yeah. I don't, I I don't know. I thought it'd be like, Oh, I'd like this more than this. Now I kind of found out I like everything. So we're not sure what I wanted to do in the future, but Interesting. Yeah. The other day, Pat was talking about this. Um, your daughter asked you that, what your favorite TV show is? Yes. Um, and that, and you took that as a currently, not all time. Yes. So what, what, what keeps your attention on uh, as far as programming, whether it's Netflix or regular TV or, 
Hulu or whatever. Oh, I don't know. I'm pretty. Do you watch anything? I I do. I go through phases. Sometimes I'll watch like a binge watch a whole season in two days, or then I won't watch Netflix for three months. I don't know. I mean, I've. I think the last show I've watched was. I went through a phase where I was only watching Zendaya shows and Timothy Chalamet <laughs> movies. Yeah. So I watched like all of those in the past month and I'm super excited for the new like ep- uh, season of um, Euphoria to come out, but I'm not a huge TV person. I honestly, unless someone's telling me, oh, you got to watch the show. I don't really keep up to date on them, but I definitely use like streaming services like Hulu and Netflix for sure. It's so weird listening to you talk about this. I mean, this is going to be such, this, this era is such an eye opener for so many people that, their whole world was programming television and yeah. their whole world was deciding what episode was going to run this week and the next week. And you could watch this TV show, but the next show isn't going to start until the fall. And you're like, I'm watching everything with Zendaya. That's all. That's all I'm going to watch is all this. You couldn't do that before. You'd get lucky to see maybe one thing a year. And then right. you'd have to wait for some other special to come out. And it's got to just, I, I swear they've got to be absolutely just like, running in circles in a corner trying to figure out <laughs> yeah i don't know the last time you <laughs> I sat down like watch the show weekly by episode i mean i hate that, that. i i after no. being able to binge watch shows i yeah it, it, sit in especially when it's on like a netflix or something and they wait every week to to drop a new episode it's like yes. man just give us all of it i don't it's frustrating yeah, 100%. There's something I, I was looking at since it's the end of the year. I was looking at some of the people who are putting out predictions for 2022. And one of the things that they came out with, I don't know if you take part in this at all, but they're saying that virtual reality VR in the next five years will be as big as Netflix, which I find amazing because yeah. that's a, such a departure from Netflix. Yeah, I've only done virtual. I was at a. I was actually working as an intern for um, an event at Council Bluffs with her dad, and I did virtual reality there for the first time, and I had never done it before. I just had seen few videos, you know, of people looking kind of crazy, just running around in circles, and I was like, "Wow, this is actually really cool." It's I was insane. like, "Too bad I don't make Christmas lists anymore for my parents because I would for sure be asking for <laughs> right? it." But yeah, I don't know. Virtual reality, I've only done it once. It's incredible. It really, my son has one, and it's cool. it's an Oculus, and it's so um it's it's in it's incredible and i yeah. and i watched actually a show a couple weeks ago about how that how virtual reality is going to transform the way we watch sports that oh. we're going to be able to have those it's good we're going to like total tool bags on our couch with all these oh, helmets yeah. on but still be able to watch a, a football game or something and be it, it, it like you're at the stadium with these things on with the the 3d cameras or the 360 cameras and everything that's that's less than five I years away. Admit, they said I can't even imagine being in this. You're literally in the stadium. You'll be like you're in the stadium. Like you'll be they'll... like you're in the stadium. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You like you're in the stadium. Like you'll sit on your couch. You'll be like you're there. Yeah. I, I just God, I don't know how I feel about that. What, what did you watch when you were doing when you did VR there at at the event? What was what was on? What were you? Doing? It was like a video in? game, almost like a video game simulation. So you were like, I guess you had like. A gun and you were like trying to you were like in like a simulation and you're trying to like yeah. you know kill the other person the targets and stuff yeah, yeah. so um, it was like a virtual video game basically i can see where you know it's like like when they when they brought along um like we when we came out and you could interact you know which was one step above video games right you were actually playing the sport and it was reacting to what you were doing um but then you put on those i mean you're like literally kind of changing the way people could exercise could move around yeah. right and mobility but it's just so weird to just imagine people sitting on their couch with it just is so futuristic and it seems no. so isolating to have like five people all sitting on their couches watching the same football game with their helmets on helmets on yeah <laughs> and the walk the plank thing did you do the walk the plank thing at all abby oh. <laughs> no i didn't it's terrifying are you scared of heights uh yes kind of okay i'm uh, i'm terrified of heights and that there's a uh like a demo whatever game that you can play when you first get it and it's a walk the plank is one of them and it, you get in this elevator and everything is so realistic you get in this elevator and it takes you up 100 and whatever floors and as soon as the door opens there's just a plank wooden plank and you just walk out and you're supposed to walk out and like the birds are planes and wind and it's so bizarre i cannot do it and i know i'm standing in my living room and I, I, I can't do it. It's I, even talking about it. I get that little tickle in my stomach. I can't do it. Yeah. I don't think I would like that either. I'm not, 
no, that sounds, if it's going to make me scared, I don't think I want to yeah. be participating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, next five years, that's what they're thinking. That's probably going to be the the thing where we're all going to make the shift to the virtual reality, which I just can't imagine. Anyway, um, okay, what about TikTok? Is that a thing? Yes, I definitely use TikTok more than anything. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know when it came about, but I remember being in college one day and everyone was just like making those TikTok dances and then COVID hit and that was the only thing to watch and do. So I think everyone kind of just hopped on the TikTok bandwagon. Yeah. Okay, when you go to as far as your for you page, when you when you start scrolling through, what do you are you seeing things that surprise you, or are you kind of like, that's interesting that that shows up for me because Pat Pat made a revelation earlier this year about what shows up in his, um, which could really get him in trouble. To be quite, I'm honest. basically a 13 year old girl according to my <laughs> FYP, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, I would say my for you page. At one point, I feel like my for you page was just like off. Every other week, it was just different kind of things, the things that I would have never guessed. But I feel like now that it's mostly my friends that I'm following and like interacting with, it's kind of catered towards, I guess, my demographic more so. So I don't really find things as much anymore. That I'm like, why is that on my for you page? But I definitely did at first, and I was like, why am I on TikTok about like beans and like things that like, <laughs> totally just not You're on the beans have any TikTok. connection to? Yeah. <laughs> Do you need like life hacks or recipes or things like that? Do I what? Do you, do you see a lot of like life hacks, recipes? Is it? Uh, 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 I would say it's mostly it? kind of like funny stuff, just like funny content. I also feel like there's sometimes some cooking stuff on there. I don't know. I'll get like invested in a cooking TikTok and I'll like just find myself scrolling, like binge scrolling for hours on <laughs> recipes that I'll never make, but right. Wish I, I could. I actually made this one the other night, just the other night from TikTok. Thank you, TikTok. It's called Next Level French Onion Chicken. And the lady made it, and I love French onion soup. Um, and it's basically like a casserole with French onion soup and chicken. And it was incredible. It was awesome. So it's the first time I've made, second time actually, that I made something off TikTok. I did the steak cube thingy. But then yeah. this one is awesome. Thank you, yeah. TikTok. Oops, hold on. My phone is going crazy. I uh, I did one, and it was one, it was a, it was a crock pot one for chicken and something marinara parmesan noodles some other stuff is really good yeah super easy yeah i'm, I'm all about that because it looks so much it's so much easier to watch that than watching a oh, i don't know 20 minute video on youtube on how to make something it's like just get to the point right the rest of it. Right? right 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 there very good all right so what's something about you that um what were you known for in high school Oh, high school. I, don't know. I feel I went to Marion High School, if you guys are familiar with that. Mm -hmm. So not a huge school, definitely a well-known name in Omaha. But I feel like I was pretty involved in, I guess in high school, I would have been the, jour the journalism kid. I was pretty heavily involved in like journalism and kind of art. I mean, I did everything from, I tried everything, not did everything. I guess I played volleyball. I did some cross country when I didn't want to play volleyball anymore. And then my parents told me I had to run track or tennis, so I said I will be playing tennis, and that wasn't the best. <laughs> I was not very good. I quite, quite honestly practiced the night before tryouts on the Wii, but I was like, I don't even know what tennis <laughs> oh is. Oh, my God. <laughs> I ended up playing tennis, but no, I was pretty involved in journalism, and I really liked working on like the school newspaper and that stuff mm -hmm. and my art classes, so yeah. I remember track. I remember track because we did volleyball. I tried basketball. Our coach was an absolute monster. And I say that lovingly because everybody absolutely adored him. But he was, it was like, I remember running suicide. So I was like, I'm out. Um, and then track, I thought, okay, yeah, I'll do shot put or discus or something like that. I don't have to run, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, not into the running thing, but yeah, totally get that. Drama? Theater? No, I was no, I should not be on stage. I was not a part of drama or theater at all. Stayed away from that. I thought you were asking her if she started drama. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, at first I was like, I don't think there was too much drama in high school. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So if you could do anything in the world, you know what you're going to do. You know what you like doing. You, you've mm -hmm. got that part, but, but say you could just do anything, snap your fingers. What would you do? What would you be doing? Oh, I would spend a year traveling. If I didn't have to worry about the funds to travel, I would spend yeah. a year traveling without doubt. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right, Pat, anything else you wanted to throw in there? No, we got to talk about VR. We got to talk about TikTok, which is always, I figured we would. Um, yeah. yeah. No. So it's, it's, uh, are you doing good in school? That's the big thing. Are you doing oh, good? Oh yeah. Yes. Graduate. I know I'm only a junior, so I still have a whole nother year left, oh. but 
this was the first semester we were back like in person so that was actually really nice and i definitely like being in person going to class more than sitting on my computer so yeah school went awesome 100 percent, 100 percent agree well we look forward to seeing your face in the building yes hopefully soon soon right hopefully. we'll get yeah. to the holidays and we'll be ready to rock abby thanks for coming on today thank you you got have it we good appreciate holidays. it you too you too, you too. Well, um it's pat and jt twitter instagram and facebook <laughs> or 402-403-9478 um you can get to us via text as well thanks for listening pat and jt podcast a huda media production